If you're watching this right now, it's my birthday and my first video of 2023. YouTube family, welcome back. And if it's your first time, I'm Devin on deck. And this is the series where we chill out and get to know each other just a little bit better. So I'm gonna go over all my previous pickups from the month before and the holiday season. I've had a good break, some time to recharge. We're going over shoes, accessories, clothing, anime, and at the very end, a personal life update for those who wanna stick around. So feel free to pause, get a snack, get something to drink, kick back, relax, and let's get into it. Okay, now starting with footwear, the first pair of shoes I want to show you are my first Adidas in like two years. At first glance, I know they look like Sambas, but they're actually Spezial. I saw them randomly on my Instagram Explore page, and when I googled the name, I actually found them on GOAT. So if you want the link, I put it down below in the description. But yeah, apparently they're handball shoes. I'm not sure what the little dots around the sole do functionally, but they look really good. They're comfortable. I'm looking forward to wearing them. And then we have my Comme des Garçons Babes. Now I will admit that I did pay resale for these. I had no idea the collab even happened, so I was late to the party. But I mean, look at these things. The leather is smooth, the suede is supple, and I love how that oversized print kind of changes depending on what material that it's over. It's a very simple shoe with a lot of subtle character, and I'll probably wear these immediately after I'm done filming this. And this final pair, a lot of y'all are gonna completely hate or you're gonna love, and they are these gardening clogs by a company called Plasticana. They are made of recycled plastic in France, as you can see by the bottom. And they're just like a very simple slip on shoe. I'm not sure if you remember a few months ago when I went to Portland, Oregon to visit the Nike headquarters. I stopped in this outdoor store and the guy who was working there had these on with like some oversized cargos and they just looked perfect. So any pant that's kind of loose, whether like a straight leg or a wide leg, these look fantastic with those. And they're only like 50 bucks and super comfortable. But I know a lot of y'all think they look goofy. I think they're fine so I'm gonna keep wearing them. Okay, now moving on to accessories. The only thing I've been wearing consistently are these hats by my creative studio on deck. And I know I've shown you these already, but the reason why I'm telling you now is because as you're watching this video, they are live on the website once again and for the last time. So if you do wanna get the navy or the cream, I'm just giving you a heads up. Obviously no pressure, but I know a lot of y'all missed out last time, so the link is in the description. And by the way, everything in the lookbook came from my closet. So if you need some outfit inspiration on what to wear with these, that's a good place to start. So I'll link the lookbook down below for you as well. Okay, now moving on to clothing. There's quite a few pieces here, so buckle up. I got three puffy jackets to show you. And this first one is by Earl, or it might be ERL, I'm not sure. It's a basic camo jacket with a lot of elevated details. First of all, this is a real down jacket, meaning that it has actual duck feathers for insulation. So super duper warm. And as you see, the camouflage blobs are actually articulated with just a single needle stitch. So it gives it this really cool textural 3D effect. You got two inside pockets, one Velcro, and the other with an elastic band, and two simple zip pockets on the outside. And even though it's a puffy jacket, when you zip it up, it still feels pretty slimming. And I love how the length is long, but like not too long. It's a great fit in my opinion. Now, fair warning, this jacket is not cheap, but I have found it on sale for you and you know exactly where to find the links. These next two jackets are Bombers by Fear of God. They are from their new Eternal collection. And as opposed to the previous jacket, these do take up a lot of space and volume. They're very, very puffy, but I like it. The fit of these is perfect for my baby torso. And my favorite detail is like this back ventilation looking thing. You see what I'm saying? They're like separated panels from the jacket that allow that extra wadding or the padding on the inside to breathe. It comes with a double zipper so you can wear it however you want to and style it depending on your body shape or how you're feeling that day. And I like the freedom it brings. And once again, Fear God comes with a very high quality, made in USA, timeless piece that I'll definitely have for years to come. And last but not least, and my favorite jacket in this entire video, and maybe in my entire closet right now, is this bomber by a designer called Sebastian Ami. This guy's based here in LA. I've met him personally. He's an awesome dude, very passionate about his work. And the details on this thing are ridiculous. First of all, the nylon he chose has like 
this natural iridescence to it. He has like this patience with his work. I think he definitely took his time with this jacket. You just, you, you can see it. Like all the zipper details on the cuffs as well as on the arm of the sleeve. It's giving like vintage flight jacket vibes. The stitching detail around the collar that not only looks cool, but it adds a little extra stiffness to it so you can wear it up or down. You got two snap pockets there as you can see. The fit is fantastic in my opinion. And if you look closely at the zipper, you can see it's reversible. The alternate side is this beautiful blood orange. Now, I'm not sure what I'm gonna wear with this side of the jacket yet, but it definitely gives me a style challenge that I'm for sure up to. And once again, overall, a beautiful jacket. I'm so glad that I bought it. And the quality, 10 out of 10. And speaking of Sebastian Ami, I wanna talk about the t-shirt that I have on right now. This is called his smock tee. I love the high collar. The drape on this is amazing. And as you can see, the silhouette is way different than any other t-shirt that I have in my closet. I'm not sure about you. And at first glance, it looks like an oversized tee, something very familiar. But the way he approached it is super different and gets me one step closer to looking like an anime character. So I got the same tee in black, obviously, but also brown and white as well. And the cargos that I'm wearing with this t-shirt are also by Sebastian Ami. As you can see, they are beautifully cut with a slight flare, made of a medium to heavyweight canvas. And although they have no stretch, they are very comfortable. And to match these, I also picked up his Samu shirt as well. I know you see the kimono vibes, a beautiful vintage wash. The details are fantastic, a lot, a lot of flavor. And overall, this is a fantastic set that I can mix and match with hella different outfits. And a heads up about the cargos, if you don't really like the flaps on the back pockets, they can be tucked in for like a very easy minimal look and they're just become like a welt pocket basically. And because they have no stretch, I highly suggest that you go up in size on your waist. And in case they are a touch too big, if you do go up, they have these adjustment straps on each side with a couple buttons depending on how much you want to cinch it in and they make up for that extra little space. So just wanted to give you a heads up. Next up is this set by Fear of God. This is their wide leg pant and hoodie from their internal collection. But as you can see by the back of the hoodie, it looks a little bit different than the one on the website because my genius self decided to wash it and dry it in the dryer. So the letters came off. Now actually it was kind of a happy accident though because I really didn't prefer the letters on the back. So kind of a win-win. But the sizing on this thing was like way bigger than I'm used to. My other Fear of God hoodies don't fit this big. So I'm not sure what's going on. And as a sidebar, this Eternal collection was just kind of meant. Like I feel like the bombers are a standout piece. I haven't tried everything obviously, but from a presentation standpoint, from a creativity standpoint, it's giving bridge, like a bridge collection. You ever like watch Marvel movies and like you're like, ah, this one wasn't as exciting because it's like a bridge movie to get to the next thing. Cause you notice it's not called the eighth, right? Last time it was a seventh. So it's not as like a real creative swing, you know, at bat. This is like a in-between thing. So, you know, whatever. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, one sweatsuit I am excited about is this one from, yet again, Sebastian Ami. Now, first of all, look at this silhouette, okay? There's no way you're gonna find these shape of pants unless you search for maybe harem pants or you Google search ninja pants. Other than that, this shape is phenomenal and different than anything else you're gonna see out there. Correction, anything that I've seen out there. And just like I said, I'm one step closer to looking like an anime character. And I really wish you can feel this hoodie I promise you the quality is better than Fear of God. Not essentials, but like mainline. I kid you not. The knit is heavier. The texture of it is fantastic. And for those of y'all that know me, none of this should surprise you. When I find an up and coming brand that I really, really like, I just support. That's just how I get down. And I feel like Sebastian Ami is like this close to like blowing up for real. I think Justin Bieber was wearing this stuff the other day. So it's getting on celebrities, man. And that's all it really takes, especially here in LA for a brand to start. You know what I mean? So when you start hearing this, name or just don't forget who put you on. Now moving on to anime. One thing that I watched over the Christmas break, I'm not sure what y'all were doing, but I was doing a whole bunch of nothing. So I got a chance to binge Chainsaw Man. That was a really fun watch. It's lighthearted and action packed at the same time. There's funny moments in comedy, but also a lot of mystery and plot twists. A really fun watch. I highly recommend it. One thing I will say without spoiling it for you, don't grow attached to any characters. That's all I gotta say. Like nobody. Okay. Cool. 
<laughs> oh, and Hunter x Hunter. Well, sorry, Hunter Hunter. Okay, relax. I am on season, I think three or four, the Greed Island arc. That's where I'm at right now. And for everybody that told me when I first said I was starting this anime, Devin, you're in for a wild ride. You did not lie. This show is not disappointing. I didn't realize there were so many levels to everything. Like the world is expanding. The mysteries are unfolding. The abilities are changing and evolving. This is like really, really good writing. And just like, again, just fun, you know? So I'm really enjoying it, but I am down one anime. So I'm not sure if you guys realize it. I like to watch like two at a time. So I need one more. Any suggestions, please drop them in the comments. Okay, now for those who stuck around to the end, the personal life update. First things first, your guy got a therapist. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I've only had like one or two sessions so far. The first one wasn't really a real session. It was more so like getting to know each other. You know, I wanted to fill them out first. And then the first session, it was cool. So we'll see how it goes. I'll let you know how it looks, you know, a month from now. We'll probably be like six sessions in by then, but I just wanted to better myself. You know what I mean? I feel like I have trauma to work through. I think I can become a better man and that's what I want to be. So I can only be my best when I am my best. And my wife, she's been doing it for like a year, bro. And she has like grown so much. So I'm just like, you know, kind of jealous. I'm just like, man, like you are growing, you're flourishing, you are freeing yourself. And I'm man enough to look at my flaws and see how I can, you know, patch it up. You know what I mean? Get better. And speaking of getting better, your boy is back on his consistent workout grind, but I'm also pairing that with not beating myself up when I don't meet the mark. I think, you know, last time I talked about this, I was kind of down about it. And I just want to break the habit of always like punishing myself or beating myself up if I don't do perfectly exactly what I set out to do. So I think this month I'm at like 15 workouts as opposed to my usual 20 that I want to hit. And the month is almost over. So, uh, you know, I might only hit like 18 and I'm cool with that. That's fine. I just, the, the point is that I'm in there consistently and I'm just getting it done. I don't care if I only got 20 minutes, I'm getting a 20 minute workout in, you know, I'm, go I'm just going to grind and go hard as much as I can in that 20 minutes. You know what I mean? Like just no excuses, but at the same time, not putting myself down. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's a balance. It's a balance. And speaking of balance, man, I have also been going physical therapy for my Achilles. Now I didn't rupture it. So don't worry. But as you guys know, I like to hike like at least once a week, but I started hiking like three or four times a week. And that actually turned into overuse for my Achilles. And I'm like, how did just one Achilles get tendonitis in it? And it happens because imbalances like in my walk and my step, and I don't have as much strength in certain muscles in my legs and my feet. So I've been doing a lot of work on that. So a lot of leg days as opposed to one a week, I'm doing like three a week because I'm going to physical therapy and I also have mine here at home that I do. So it's been a lot. It's been a lot of sore walking, but I'm getting better and I'm already seeing myself walk better and I'm noticing my imbalances and I'm performing better. So yeah, I'll update you on that too. I'm not sure how we got on this subject, but I think it kind of just, you know, goes with the, with the territory of just talking about, you know, self-improvement. You feel me? So as you can see, like as you watch these videos over time. If you go back to older videos, the office wasn't like this. I was shooting in an environment that, you know, I would kind of just try to zhuzh up as I go. But as you can see, I have a couch behind me now. You get little glimpses as you watch videos, but truth be told, like the office around me right now, I'm almost like 90% done with my full like decor upgrade for everything. Cause I feel like, you know, it's my man cave and also my studio slash office. So I want to make a creative, you know, inspiring environment. So I'm going to drop a video on like my full office remodel or you know decor video just know that it's coming okay and the last thing i want to share with y'all once again kind of personal but i know that a lot of y'all are in relationships or you are married like myself or you know you want to be in a relationship and one thing that i do want to say has improved a lot for me and that's been helping me and my wife out over the last few weeks is that we have scheduled date nights we do them every friday now i used to think that was really corny when i was younger and i'm like yo that, that takes the spontaneity out of it you know what i mean like every night should be a date night and I think that was just super idealistic and I had less going on when I was younger. I had more time on my hands, right? I, I could play video games more and watch anime more. But now that I'm chasing my dreams and you know, I am a CEO of a creative studio and also art director and a marketer and content creator, you know, all the things, I do not want to lose my foundation, things that matter the most to me, which is my family, which is my wife. You get what I'm saying? It was important that I do the same thing with anything else that I prioritize and I put that on the calendar. So Friday after five, don't call me. I ain't picking up the phone. You know what I mean? The whole night, that whole time is just for me and her. Or you're probably gonna go to brunch the next morning. Then I talk to you. You know, like it's just important that we prioritize each other. Like love is not something that you just fall into or fall out of. It's something that you gotta choose. And you gotta choose that person every day if, you know, if they're worth choosing. And she and I wanna prioritize each other. So it's been good, man. It's been a, a crazy blessing to us. I'm very, very grateful that we're both mature enough to, you know, make that decision. And yeah, that's really it, y'all. 
So I went kind of deep, but yeah, there you go. There goes my business for y'all to, <laughs> to uh, absorb. If you made it to the end of the video, please, please say it in the comments so I can give you a heart or a thumbs up. And please give me a thumbs up on this video as well. I would really appreciate that. That helps out my channel tremendously, as you know. And yeah, I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.